Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Caregiver Crosswalk, Dementia Care Consulting, Never Roam Alone. And welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. Matt Del Vecchio here, specializing in life transitions, downsizing in the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Matt, if memory serves me correct, today is a very special day in the Del Vecchio household. Yes, it is. It is my daughter, Lisa, her 23rd. My goodness, that's a number. Uh, It's getting up there. So, Lisa, happy 23rd uh, birthday. She's my pride and joy. And, and Corey, as you know, I've I've talked about some of her challenges in the past on the show, being someone with uh, special needs. And she's been very fortunate and had some wonderful support through different uh, education institutions like the MAB Mackay and and Summit School and now with the the Wager uh, Adult Education Center and you know as a parent you always want what's best for your children and the concern for many families with children of special needs and that could be a parent it could be a family member grandparents are are even concerned you know what's going to happen after they finish school their 20s and 30s and and can they be a productive member of society? Well, the answer should be a resounding yes, but much easier said than done. And uh, to help shed some light on some of the wonderful programs out there, we're very proud to have Nick Catalifos on the line. And Nick is the principal of Wager Adult Education Centre. He's also the chairman of the board at Giant Step School of Montreal. And, uh, you know, great guy. He's the recipient of several prestigious awards, including the Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Medal for public service. He's a real community leader. Nick, so glad to have you on Life Unrehearsed. Welcome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, and before we start, happy birthday to uh, <laughs> Lisa. That's, that's wonderful to, to hear that it's her birthday today. Yeah, no, very proud. Uh, um, you know, this is is this is your world, Nick, and and you are uh, so entrenched, and that's why we're very pleased to to get your input here. And could you just explain to us some of the challenges faced by people with special needs as they approach adulthood and and finding a job? Well, well to begin with, there's there's a, a very real transition period that takes place, you know, between adolescence and, and adulthood for everybody. But for special needs uh, um, people, I think it's uh, it's particularly. Um, challenging for, for many reasons. Um, many, uh, many people are in terrific programs uh, all over the place, whether it's in, in different uh, high schools, uh, in the public or in the, uh, in the private sector, um, and they, they, they do really well in those programs. The reality is that once they hit uh, 21 and it's time to, to move on to something else, um, then there's a lot of, uh, of challenges that uh, that uh, that begin simply because of the fact that you know many families describe this this proverbial notion of hitting a wall um, when uh, when their their kids become uh, become adults and uh, and need uh, programs that will service them. Um, so I'm I'm very happy to be working, very proud to be working at uh, at Wager with the English Montreal School Board, where we offer. Um, a whole bunch of programs for people with uh, special needs. Um, we're not the only school at the board uh, in adult ed that offers these programs. There are other great schools as well that offer um, different uh, different programs and approaches like Galileo, um, John F. Kennedy, and Saint Laurent Adult Ed as well. Um, and, and the programs are really geared towards building up the students' independence, um, sense of self-worth. Um, it, we try to continue with the development process that many of these students have benefited from in terms of some of the um, the, the special ed high schools that they may have uh, attended, and um, and we we work on 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 these uh, these skill sets that they need not only in terms of their personal development, but also hopefully in terms of getting them um, employment uh, down the line. So uh, it, w- you mentioned something that struck me. We, when you talk about challenges, I wonder if one of the challenges is uh, potentially the reluctance from employers or um, even society in general to hire people with special needs. Well, that, that's been a, a major challenge for, uh, for the special needs community for, uh, for well, forever. I mean... It's a well-known fact that um, a lot of people with special needs have a very difficult time um, finding uh, proper employment. Um, I'm deeply involved with, with autism because of my own son, who's now 18 uh, years of age. Um, we know that, Trim, just as an example, about more or less uh, 85% of them um, have a very difficult time with finding any type of, uh, of employment. Um, so there, there is a definite need for, for programs um, that will, will support these people to find work because, ironically, the, the research shows very clearly they are employed. 
um, they are excellent employees. They, they do a really terrific job. They do a lot of good for a company's bottom line, quite frankly. Um, I don't look at this simply from the perspective of some kind of a charitable approach. I, I also look at it from very much a, a, a business approach. Um, a lot of our of our students um, are absolutely excellent employees, and when they get into the workforce, um, we we get wonderful feedback from uh, the the companies or individuals that uh, that hire them. But there definitely is a misconception out there still, I think, mm-hmm. um, that um, that they're not employable, and that, that's just not the case. Definitely. And, and uh, listening to Life on Rehearse with Matt and Corey here, and we're talking with Nick Catalifos about some unique programs for uh, children and special needs. And uh, Nick, I could speak personally about some employers' reluctance. We I've seen it firsthand. My daughter, Lisa, has seen it firsthand. Many of her students at class have seen it firsthand. And yet at the other end of the spectrum, there are some wonderful, wonderful employers that, that totally get it. And you're right. This this isn't charitable work. Uh, these uh, can be very uh, productive employees, and some uh, employers get that, and they see that firsthand themselves. Part of what helps bridge that gap, Nick, um, and you see this, Wager, you oversee a program called uh, SVI, if I've got the acronym mm-hmm. right, which is like a stage, a training program. Can you tell us a, a little bit about that? Sure. We, we actually have uh, two programs that we run at, uh, at for, for our special needs. Um, the, the first one is, is called SIS, or, or Social Integration Services, which is, which is really a, a program that's geared towards helping students to, to build up their sense of autonomy and to integrate back into, into the community. Um, the, the SVI program, well, the V is for vocational. It's really geared towards, uh, towards employment. Um, we help the students to, um, to build up, once again, their own sense of, of autonomy. Um, the, we build up their vocational skills, work on their self-determination skills, social skills, um, communication, and then offer them some very practical approaches when it comes to um, issues such as uh, how to conduct oneself during an interview, for example. Um, and, and ultimately, uh, we also help the students to find work stages where they have the opportunity to go into the, uh, the, the workplace and to work in a company. Um, they're supported by, by someone who, uh, who serves as a type of job coach from the mm-hmm. school who goes in once in a while to make sure that everything is okay. Um, and when they, when they finish the program, the goal really is, is to, to ensure that they're ready to get out there and, uh, and work for themselves, to go out there and find a job and, uh, and, and succeed at that job. This is so incredible, this program and initiative that you are offering the, the students who are going to be going into the workforce. I wonder if you had some examples of, I, I don't know if you're at liberty to say, and I wouldn't necessarily want to know the organizations or the companies, but what types of work stages are out there? Well, first of all, just just to be clear, I mean this this program is a program that's uh, that's recognized and, and that's that's offered at the school board um, with permission from the Ministry of Education. Just to be uh, just to be clear about that, it's a ministry program. It's sanctioned, um, and some of the jobs that we're talking about, we have students that have done stages in all sorts of uh, of, of companies, everything from from bakeries to uh, to supermarkets, um, uh, computer companies. Um, printing companies, um, all sorts of operations, really. Um, also, in very much uh, administrative posts and in, in office settings, it really does depend on the interest of the individual student, what their what their um, abilities are. Um, but but we really want them to try to to get a couple of stages in during their time at Wager, so that they can see what's out there and figure out for themselves. What makes them happy? What what what's going to be good for them in terms of the the employment that they're ultimately going to uh, going to go after? Um, and and by doing that, we're also helping to build up their own sense of self esteem and their 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 integration into into the workplace. You know, I'm glad you're bringing up self esteem and confidence. That's such a big part of it, Nick. And um, you know, you have uh, been very much involved in a fascinating program called. Polaris, which provides real life training in a retail grocery environment. So we absolutely want to hear about this, Nick. But first, we have to head out to the CJD Traffic Center. Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna Senior Transition Support, specialists in downsizing and seniors' residences. Welcome back. You're listening to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Sirota, along with my co-host, Matt Del Vecchio, and we are talking to Nick Catalifos about some unique programs that are 
have been organized and created to help children and teens with special needs. So we've talked a little bit about a few of them, Nick, but I understand you're involved in a very, very interesting program called Polaris, Mm -hmm. real life training in a retail grocery environment. Can you share with us more about that? Absolutely. We're, um, we're, this is a, a wonderful project that uh, we're, we're quite proud of. Um, it, it was initiated by the team at, uh, at Giant Steps, uh, the, the Director General there, Thomas Henderson, and Mr. Andre Pereira, who's uh, the coordinator of the, uh, of the project. And what it is basically is a partnership between uh, Giant Steps, Wager, um, a research group uh, based at the Neuro called the, the Transforming Autism Care Consortium, um, and, and a major corporation, in this case uh, Weston or Loblaws, uh, the Loblaw group of, uh, of companies um, that include uh, Maxi, Farmer Pre, and, uh, and Provigo here in Quebec. Um, so it's, it's an industry-specific employment initiative for people who are on the spectrum, for adults on the spectrum. Originally, the idea was to have a pretty large cohort, but because of the COVID crisis, mm-hmm. we had to be very careful and follow uh, government regulations in terms of the size of the group, etc. So we've got 10 participants in the group right now. And in essence, what we've done is we've given the, uh, the students an opportunity um, to, to not only learn from a theory perspective about working in this specific industry, in this case it's in a supermarket, um, and in, in uh, an industrial-based uh, um, milieu in terms of the, uh, the, the jobs that are being offered, um, by doing the following, we, we have a teacher working with two job coaches who are preparing the students in terms of this specific industry, um, they are also able to do a, a, an internship um, working either at one of the uh, markets that are being run by the company, in this case Maxi, and they also have the opportunity to work at a, at a major distribution center that's being uh, run by, uh, by Provigo, part of the big uh, corporation. So this way they're getting to experience a, a variety of jobs in this particular industry. And on top of that, the company was, uh, in this case, Maxi, was extremely gracious uh, to us. They actually donated a mini market, a mini supermarket that we've installed in the corner of the cafeteria at Wager, where the students actually get to practice um, on a regular basis in terms of the different jobs that are being offered there. So anything from placing items on the, on the shelves and doing inventory to, to individuals that might be interested in working a cash register. Um, we have a fully uh, functional uh, cash register uh, that, uh, that's, uh, that's in this mini market. Mm-hmm. And the students get to practice. So it's very hands-on. Um, it's very concrete. Um, we also have a part of the program that involves a bit of virtual reality where the students get to do a, a virtual walkthrough of the supermarket as well as a distribution center. We kind of prepare them before they go out there to do the, the stages um, themselves, which is it's quite effective. Um, and the final major component of the program is a, a mentorship uh, series where we have people who, who happen to be on the spectrum, who are autistic, who, who are out there, who are working, they are employed, they come in either in person or, again, because of the COVID situation, we do it virtually, they, we do this online, um, they, they interact with our students and talk to them a little bit about their experiences, what's worked, what hasn't worked for them, and, and just to inspire and encourage them in terms of, uh, of this particular path that, uh, that they've taken. Such an amazing program, Nick. And uh, by the way, congratulations, made national news yes, yesterday I, I, I on the weekend. I saw it, yes. a, 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 an article in the Globe and Mail, and then you made it there. So fantastic to get some exposure to such a wonderful program. We're talking with Nick Catalifos about some unique programs for children and special needs. That's certainly one of the unique programs. Now, Nick, uh, you mentioned earlier on you do have a son on the autism spectrum. You're, pe- you're speaking from experience, and can you tell us about some of the challenges you have faced as a family? Sure. Um, well, Man- Manoli is 18. Uh, he's, um, um, he's, he has a lot of challenges in terms of communication and, um, and in terms of uh, you know, self-regulation. Um, um, and he's, he's, he's gotten a, a heck of a lot better um, with time with a lot of the, the programs and the assistance that he's gotten, in, in his case, at, at Giant Steps. We were quite fortunate that he began there at the age of, uh, of four. Um, it's a wonderful program because it, it not only gives the students a lot of, uh, um, you know, obviously, the academic uh, help and guidance that they need uh, on an individualized basis, but, but there's also a lot of therapeutic help that takes place at the school as well. So we've had a lot of success there for him. Um, which is uh, extremely important to us as a, as a family. 
Um, he's um, he's a wonderful young man, and and you know, incredibly, we're at a point now where where he's really beginning to kind of establish himself in terms of his own sense of self and independence. Um, this is a kid that loves the classical music. He's mm-hmm. learning to play the piano. Um, he does things on the computer that uh, that I'm clueless about, quite frankly. Um, so he he's uh, he's got a lot of gifts um, and a lot of talents that we wanna we want to to work on and we want to use because the goal for him, as as is the case for all families, is to be as independent as as possible and for him also to get out there one day and and hopefully um, find some kind of employment mm-hmm. that he will be happy with and 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 that he that will. You know, help him feel like he's accomplishing something. I um, think he's um, very fortunate to have you <laughs> and your uh, partner um, gu- guiding him, supporting him, and encouraging him along the way. I'm going to ask you a bit of a maybe a tough question. I don't sure. know. Uh, if a parent is worried about their child's vocational future, mm-hmm. what advice would you give them? Well, to begin with, what I, I always tell parents to get involved, um, and and you know everybody everybody can do this in different ways. My you know my my wife and I did it uh, did it the way that we felt comfortable in terms of uh, of him um, going to a school like Giant Steps and getting involved with uh, with the school. Um, also, on a very uh, you know personal level, professionally, I, we we were deeply involved in the school system, so we see what's what's happening in in, uh, in in schools as well. I think it's really important for parents to get out there and to advocate. And to 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 meet with other parents and find out what works, what doesn't work. Um, understanding that every single case is different. There's no one size fits all, uh, you know, approach when it comes to this subject. Um, so for 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 me, it's really it's really that it's really involvement. I think it really begins with uh, with with that. There's a lot of wonderful community organizations out there or community-based organizations out there that focus on autism and other types of uh, of special needs. Um, I think it's important for parents to get involved with with those organizations um, from a volunteer perspective, from an administrative perspective, where possible. Um, it's 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 critical that parents um, drive this uh, drive this type of uh, of, uh, of of movement. I'm going to call it that. The other big thing I think for when it comes to people um, who are on the spectrum specifically, um, I also think it's important to to encourage self advocacy. Um, I think that there's a lot of wonderful people out there who uh, who are on the spectrum, who are doing incredible work, and their voice needs to be heard. Um, it's important for them also to serve a role in these organizations and to uh, to to express what what they've gone through, what their experiences are. Um, I've I've seen my own son benefit from this when he interacts with uh, with others who are on the spectrum, who uh, who can walk him through certain experiences. Um, as a professional, I've seen that with the uh, the mentorship uh, program that we're running through Polaris when some of the uh, guest speakers we have come in mm-hmm. and speak to the students. Um, I think that's a major issue. We need to promote that as parents um, nice. and, 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 and give our kids the the ability, the confidence that they can go out there and self-advocate. I think that's, uh, and Nick, that's something I, I that we think, have to push. I think mm-hmm. that's something you're bringing up that I just want to, uh, and I'm speaking now as, as, a, as a parent of someone of a special needs. You know, it does take a village. There's, there's, it's not just parents, it's grandparents, it's siblings, brothers, sisters. Everybody. Brothers. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you're right, you do have to advocate. But I think the most important part that I think I would suggest, and you just mentioned it, is the support and guidance that you can give them to be confident. Because at the end of the day, it's them that's going to be working. It's going it's going to be them that's going to be with that employer, and they're going to be nervous. And if you can continue to find what those special little talents are and those gifts are and to give them confidence, uh, I think it will make them uh, as successful as we could possibly make them. So, Nick, we really want to thank you for taking some time with us on a Sunday and appreciate your kind words. I thank you very much, and if uh, if there's anyone out there that's interested in in the programs at Wager, they can certainly reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to uh, to help them out in, in any way that we can. All right. That's Nick Catalifos. Nick is the principal of Wager Adult Education Center and the chairman of the board at Giant Steps School of Montreal. Now, Corey, what do we have coming up next week? Next week on Life on Rehearsed, as the cold and ice builds up on the streets, we may be finding ourselves going down. So join us to learn how to avoid slips and falls both 
outside, but also inside the house with Dr. Joe Mor Morris. Uh, yeah, that's going to be quite interesting and uh, uh, quite timely. We're also going to hear about a brilliant concept called a death doula. You've heard about a doula for childbirth. Well, um, there's death doulas, and we're going to have a death doula on the show. Very um, interesting concept dealing with end-of-life care for families. So that's it for Life on a Hearse. We want to thank our technical producer, David Simon, and uh, you could listen to a recording on the show on the CJD 800 website, and you can catch us every Sunday at 4 p.m. on CJD 800.